Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today, your special guest is gonna be me, because I know you've been seeing a lot of Mike's face <laughs> lately. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. As always, my name is Mike, and this is the beautiful... Isabella. <laughs> Isabella. She's actually finally joining me on one of the episodes. And you know what? When we were going through uh, my Instagram, I had asked uh, what topics and stuff like that you would like to hear. And by popular demand, everybody wanted to know about us. They wanted to know a little bit more about my wife and I. They wanted to learn how we met. They wanted to learn our process. They want to know about relationships. So by popular demand, here she is. Yay. <laughs> well, you got me. So right now we are going to tell you guys how we met. Well, what he just said, the works. So start it off. Me? Tell them. Oh, I'm starting? <laughs> okay. So um, we've known each other for how long now? It is going to be... See, I'm playing it safe. I asked her. I'm testing her. <laughs> uh, well, we met um, in 2013. So 13, 14, 15. It's been like five, what, five years now? Something like that. It's been about five years. Uh, it was from, like the, from the moment that we had started talking, um, then, you know, getting to know each other, becoming friends, obviously praying about it. Um, then finally asking her to be my girlfriend. Well, let's rewind it. Let's rewind it. You just like went through the entire process of... <laughs> and that's the end of our marriage. episode. <laughs> okay, so how did we meet? Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I first saw Mike at church, I was like, number one, that's the only white boy in this church. <laughs> and number two, he's so cute. And I even told my friends, I was like, that is a cute white guy. Like, someone should like talk to him and all my friends were like no i don't like him blah 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 and somehow some way we met on a new year's like new year's eve service at church we met after midnight and um the, the next first day, words that she ever said to me in my life was oh mike is too cool to say hi to us <laughs> I did because I just wanted him to say hi because he followed me on Instagram, but then he never spoke to me in person. Girls, um, how many guys follow ghost, you on Instagram follower. and then they don't talk to you in person? Kind of awkward, right? <laughs> so pretty much the next day we got invited to a New Year's Day barbecue and that's when we really actually officially met. Right, which I still didn't say any words to her that night, uh, but we ended up playing basketball and stuff like that. I happened to ball everybody up that night. Do you remember? Yeah, I yeah, remember I balling Ronald balling, balling you up. No. Nah. <laughs> um, so we actually, um, that night when we were over there, we were playing basketball, we had a barbecue, so on and so forth. Then we all went our separate ways. I went home. That was on a Tuesday, right? The next day, it was actually a Wednesday. I remember because when I first received my first ever text message from Isa, I was actually praying for, um, we had hop that day, which is our Bible study. And um, I was praying. praying. And in the middle of my prayer, I get rudely interrupted by a text message. From by the will of God. <laughs> from a random number saying, hi, Mike, this is Isabella. I was wondering if you had left a watch uh, at the house last night that we were at because we found one that we were missing and we we're wondering if it was yours. Yeah. So long story short, ladies, I threw the seed or <laughs> how do I say? I threw, uh, what the, I threw the, the rod in the water and then I just reeled him in nice and slow. Nice so and slow. I just dropped it and then he came running. I don't know what to tell you guys. So anyway, since the day that she texted me on that Wednesday, we haven't stopped texting since that day. So from January all the way to December, he got to know my family. He got to know my friends. We were friends first. Um, before anything, you know, we fasted, we prayed separately together. And the great thing is that, you know, obviously you want some kind of confirmation. And for me, I had seen so many difficult relationships, um, you know, at church or with my friends and things like that. And I didn't want to have a huge difficulty. I didn't want people to go against it. Like, you know, that's just something that I wanted. And thank God that personally for our relationship, everything was super smooth with our parents, with our mentors, with our leaders, with our spiritual parents. And that's what really mattered to us. So in December, he asked me to be his official girlfriend. 
and we went December. out for almost three years for some people that's way too long <laughs> but we went out for almost three years until he finally proposed to me and i got this bling bling on my finger i did so uh let's rewind a little bit really quick okay, wait, wait, wait. um because you know i gotta boast a little um so the day that i asked her to be my girlfriend do you remember that day i remember that day i do too um so <laughs> The way that I did it, which was some people's like standard for a proposal, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like went above and beyond. So um, my parents happened to live like right on the beach. Like if you look out uh, from their balcony, you could see the beach. And um, so we would have access directly there. And so what I did was <laughs> I invited her over and um, my parents and all of that, they all helped me. I created like this like rose petal pathway, pathway right? Uh, leading up to a dining room table, uh, not a dining room table, but a, a table to eat dinner. Um, and there was a restaurant that was inside of my building where my parents live. So I had them cater to us. Uh, they had, they gave us a waiter and all of that. They brought the food out. So she came, there was rose petals, um, obviously music, the table. We had dinner right on the beach. Um, and then of course I'm shaking because I'm super nervous to ask her. So I'm doing everything that I possibly can to delay the actual question. Um, but whatever. So I ended up doing it. I gave dedicated a song to you. I dedicated a song. I tried to dance. Try. If anybody that knows me knows that this dude right here don't dance. Um, I dance by myself at wedding. <laughs> Uh, so we danced. Um, I gave you actually a watch. Yes, um, I, I still gave have her it. a watch that she really, really wanted. Um, and then from there, I asked her to be my girlfriend, and the rest was history. Then uh, two. Are you sure it was three years? It was a while because on the second year, I was already expecting that ring, and Boy. I was like, "What is happening?" You know, we have so many testimonies in our process, um, which would be way too long right now in this video to share all of them. But, um, you know, one of the things that I would like to share with you is that, you know, God had always uh, provided every step of the way for us. That's true. You know, we, uh, w you know, God always provides where he guides. You know, he always provides wherever he leads you in. You know, whatever is the will of God, he'll provide for it. And, um, you know, so throughout the entire process, you know, God was just providing everything. I remember, you know, even the wedding rings uh, that she got, you know, those were sewed into us. Um, you know, our entire wedding. wedding was paid for from A to Z. I didn't spend a dime out of my own personal pocket. Uh, God provided everything for that, everything for our honeymoon, even the flights to go over there. Uh, that was all provided for the first couple of months, I think three months or two months of our um, apartment down payment was yeah paid for even getting our house that we're sitting in right now everything has been provided for this entire way and you may say how like who who did it god sends people i'm telling you right now god provides god god shows up you find money in in your purse like things happen like that to us and you may say like that's impossible or you may say isa like be real are you kidding it's true, like we wouldn't tell people the need that we had. People knew we were getting married, but you know, people didn't actually see like, oh, that we were suffering, that we needed money, nada que ver. Nothing like Actually, that. Actually, um, so one day we're, oh. we're, about, <laughs> we're about a week away from our wedding, right? I'm sweating bullets because now the pressure is on. And, um, and so oh, yeah. when I, she sends me a text message, I'm sitting in my office at work, and she sends me a text message and she goes, uh, we still need to pay for the catering, we still need to pay for the flowers, and we still need to pay for God, I don't know what else. Those and are the two biggest things. I started obviously. freaking out because we're about a week away from the wedding and we don't have the money. Like, I have zero dollars at this point. So I'm in Chile, okay? Trying not to think about this wedding, trying not to think about the fact that we have to come up with like 5K to finish the flowers, the cake, I don't even know what else, what was it, the food? We don't know where it's coming from and out of nowhere, I promise you, like I'm not lying, I wouldn't be lying about this. Out of nowhere, someone sends me a text message and says, I am going to be taking care of your flower arrangements. You don't have to pay me a dime. It's gonna be covered. Bro, when I got that text message and I called to tell him, we went 
crazy because it's something that we weren't expecting. Some, I mean, we were praying to God that something would happen. So I was like, I cannot believe this right now. Like I'm in another country right now. Mike is freaking out in Miami and God just came through. That's actually not the testimony that I was going to give, but that goes what? to show that we have so many testimonies. What testimony? Okay. So in Are the middle serious? of all of that, the couple of things that we needed was the flowers, which is what she just testified okay, about. Yeah. But in that same like span of an hour or two hours or whatever part that we were going crazy, I check my bank account. Oh yeah. And I promise to God, I didn't. I I I had maybe a couple of hundred dollars sitting in there. And I promise you, when I log into my bank account, I had like two thousand dollars sitting in my bank account. And I'm like, yo, how the heck do I have all of this money sitting in my bank account? So I start scrolling through my statement, trying to figure out where it came from. And something that was held up by the IRS was like two years ago, something that was held up that I never received supernaturally just came into my bank account at the same exact time that I needed that same amount of money. And so it's crazy, man, how God provided everything. Um, and as we close for this video, um, I just want to encourage everybody that is out there, whether you're in a relationship now or you're entering into a relationship or you're looking forward and in entering into one in the near future, uh, I just want to encourage you that, you know, just be patient. As you could see in our process, um, we were very patient, you know. Um, I was, you know, going three years. Too patient. <laughs> too patient. Um, I, I, went, I waited a couple of years. There was no rush. Um, whenever you know that somebody's the will of God, no matter how long the process is, if they're the one at the end of everything, they will still be standing there. And that's something that I had to tell myself constantly was, you know, there was a moment where um, we had to fast each other. Or there was moments where we did stop talking for a short period of time to make sure that we were the will of God. And in that season, I used to have to always remind myself, I said, God, if she's the one, no matter how long or how much distance we have from apart from each other, I know that if she's it, she's going to be there at the end. And so I just want to encourage everybody, you know, like trust in the timing of God, be patient. If she or he is the one, they will always be there at the end of the process. And, um, and God will provide, you know, those that are believing right now for your wedding to be paid for, or your house to be paid, or, you know, you're waiting for God's provision. I can tell you, and I prophesy, and I come into an agreement with you that God will provide every step of the way. If it is his will, he will provide. Well, guys, that is a wrap for this episode. We're actually going to do a lot more of our personal experiences and our relationship and so on and so forth. So we want you to stay tuned. And if you could please do us a favor, if you want to be updated on all the latest releases and videos that we're going to be updating, we want you to press the subscribe button. I don't know where it like is. Like this video and share it with a friend if you would like to. Uh, stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming. We'll see you guys soon.